Close to me, close to me. 
closer. Closer. To you. You're as close as you want to be. Closer. Closer. To me.
David, when his son died with Bathsheba, was that the one? The Bible says for seven days he, he said, I can't go to him. I can't, he can't come back to me, but perhaps I can go to him. Remember, he got up and he washed his face and his hands and he went to eat. They couldn't understand it. There's always a perhaps with God. How many of you know that? There's always a perhaps with God if we get in the happenings of what the Lord is doing. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Now, God wants us to cry aloud and spare not. That's the word of God. Cry aloud and spare. Don't spare the horses, honey, when you start to pray. God wants to take his people into a new place of understanding, a new place of hearing, and a new place. Things are kind of iced right now. I saw that in a dream. It's ice over a few things. But it's melted. But the Democrats did, you know, they thought of all these these swordless efforts are going to work. And now you know what's happened? They planted a lot of seed. And now the harvest is coming back and some of the mayors and governors don't know what to do. Amen. They didn't know God was watching. God watches everything. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yep. Glory to God. He knows where everything is. You all know that, don't you? Yeah. He knows where everything oh, yeah. is. Nothing's hidden from the Lord. Oh, yeah. So if you've got some lost friends, ask God where they are. Hallelujah. You lost something in the natural, ask God. Now, I don't know how Richard got on this song this morning, but that's where we are. God wants us to come closer. After some of you left here last Friday, I know you had to go. So the maintenance man came in telling his story, and the glory of the Lord fell in this room. Woo! He said how he got saved. Listen, we need to tune into the details. Hallelujah. But he had earphones on. I said, what kind of music are you listening to? He said, country and western. I said, weren't you listening to Christian music? And he gave me his reasons. Don't leave it like it is. You've got to search out everything today. Don't leave people like they are. I saw a man yesterday at a service station, and he was dressed fairly nice. And I knew he was maybe homeless. He had his backpack on. He's trying to figure out which direction to take. I'm getting gas. So I pulled around in front of him and gave him a little money. He said, oh, some free money. I want to say, no, this is God's money. Be careful yeah. how you spend it. Yeah. But I'm getting him to his next place. We're going to get each other to the next place. Do you Hallelujah. Know? We're, we're going to line ourselves with the word one another. And God is going to come on the scene. And you're going to see protection like you've never heard of it Amen. before. Amen. Amen. You're going to see manifestation like you've never read it before. The glory of the Lord is going to be your real reward. Hallelujah. He's going to catch up with you. But what's been lost now has been found. But you have to aim for it, call for it, look for it, think about it. In the night you're getting up. You're not just going into the restroom. You're going to a new place of rest. God, what's going on? I'm awake. Hallelujah. I'm awake, Lord. What's going on? And you send up a few messages in tongues. I'm talking like somebody knows what they're talking about here. You protect yourself with maybe one more time. Maybe I just need one more covering. One more covering. Now, Lord, if you found that I'm worthy to give me something, I'm going to lay down and let you speak to my heart. Get close to God. Close. Close to God. Close. And keep up a good report, an up-to-date report. Now, Lord, I know I need to be you know, instructed, corrected on something, and now's a good time to tell me. Hallelujah. Because you want to go back to sleep so there's no fight left in you. Glory to God. God wants to tell us the things. He wants a new order put into it because he's doing a new thing. How many of you understand what I'm saying this morning? A new thing. A new purpose. And I prayed and said, Lord, where are we right now? Where are we? What do we need to know? We're a needy people. That's all right, honey. You just stand in the glory. Wait in the glory. Close to you, Lord. I long to be. Oh, to be close. Who sang that song? Oh, to be close to you. That's where I long to be. To hide myself in your presence, Lord. To know my destiny. Every step that I take is one less step I need. To be in your presence, close to you. Close to you, Lord. And you'll smell his fragrance. You'll know the color of his eyes. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
I got a call yesterday. I'm going to warm you up with this one. I have a friend. She has a school and she has a nursery and she has a church. And if you're watching this morning, her name is Carolina, but she lives in Tennessee. <laughs> and we call each other just to get a good laugh. You know, what am I saying? We talk about the Lord. And she said she was went to bed and, you know, barely got into bed. She's tired. She's busy all day long. And she remembered she didn't pull the covers up on herself. Went to sleep and she woke up in the morning. And it seems like an angel visited her while she was asleep and pulled the covers up. All the way to the neck like they were making up the bed. And all that was sticking out was her head. Can you say, do it for me, Lord? Do it for me, me, too, me, Lord. Too. me too. Me too. Let, let the angels listen. You don't tell angels what to do, but you tell God to tell the angels what to do. Lord, I need two or three of them today. Come on, it'll be busy today. Lord, I need your help at the red lights and the stop signs and all the things that I need to do. We need to do that because God is a multifaceted God, many-breasted one, and he's feeding us that that is needed for this hour. And you have more than one thing on your mind or on your schedule because it must be accomplished in this day. This is the day he's given us on the calendar. How many know what I'm saying? Yeah. What are we going to do with this day? Is it going to be two or three pages in our book of what was accomplished in the presence of Jehovah? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And this morning, it was five after six, and I don't usually get up that early because I do everything the night before. So I'm relaxing on the bed, and I knew if I didn't get up, the angel was going to get me up. Oh. I felt it that close to me. You know, I'm talking about them. They don't come near you if you don't feel a little electricity. Come on. That's how you know. They've been around the throne where all the light in the world is. And that light is energizing you as they're near you every day to order your steps and accomplish what he's asked you to accomplish. Praise you, Jesus. In the presence Tapestry that can hang in my hall all the time. 
I've never seen anything like that. He just took them. Suppose he threw a handful. He says, you buy the veal at a great price. Come on, worship. It's a great price. Yeah. What comes out of you is what you have worked with God all day long. You're working your praise. Your praise is by overcoming. Take in the hurdles. Jesus. Yeah. Tell him how much you love him. Jesus. Show us how to express our love in a greater measure. Show us, Lord, our voice is who we are. Let us be a John the Baptist or a David or somebody. Hallelujah. That knows how to say your name. Jesus, what a wonder you are. What a wonder. He's your day star. He's your morning star. Hallelujah. He's the only star I know that's rising today. Hallelujah. <laughs> and he's got a new film every day. New discoveries. New discoveries. I'll never forget that. I don't know why it was gray. But the little pouch was a was a knitted gray pouch. He reached into and took the pearls out and he went, five pearls. Come on, get your pearl. <laughs> See a vision. See a vision. Get a vision of the Lord. How beautiful he is. Now he's not going to be beautiful in the natural. The Bible says that no one would desire him. I've seen him with every, his, he has holes in his cheek where they pull the hair out. It looked like a bad case of acne. And the look on his face wasn't a face that you'd go after. It was a face of suffering. It was a face of rejection. Hallelujah. The face of the Lord. And his hair was down to here. But he had a look in his eyes that was going to judge everything. I saw the fire in his eyes. And he had the unusual crown on his head. And it wasn't sitting on top. It was, it looked like, it looked like the crown that had shook many nations. And he's shaking every nation around Israel right now. And this morning I had a vision of the American flag. You know those flags that has Israel and America? But Israel was cut away from America. I don't know that what that means exactly. I can speculate. We have to be careful how we think about her, about her and treat her. He's on the Lord's mind all the time. And you're on his mind all the time. And let him be on your mind all the time. Mindful of who he is. Don't stop. She loves me. She loves me not. 
I said, Lord, please don't stop when she lets me down. <laughs> she tells me, and I woke up. You know, you need these little rhythms and rhymes and poems in your life that you're standing on tiptoe. Lord, tell me something else. I don't care what you want to tell me, but just let me hear your voice. Let me hear Sing with me. I used to sing with Ruth Hampton on the first step. And we're in this lane together, on the smirch together. Hallelujah. Remember the man they pronounced him dead? And the Lord told the preacher to go lay hands on him anyway and pray for him. And everybody told him three times, oh, he's dead. The whole car is destroyed. He's destroyed. He has no pulse. So he went over and started, put his hand. He got through all the wreckage and squeezed his finger through all the wreckage and put it on the man's arm and he began to sing, let's have a little talk with Jesus. And after a while, it was two people singing in the wreck. Come on, man. you need to hear a trumpet like he just gave. Yeah. Sound the alarm. Yeah. And he's singing. And the man almost passed out. He was doing the pray. And he runs back to the ambulance driver. He's alive. I'm telling you, man, he's dead. No, no, no. He's alive. I feel, come on, I feel his life right now. Yeah. He's alive. Yeah. He's alive. Yeah. I tell you, he's alive. He's alive. And the man three times told him to be quiet. He's dead. You, you go over there. And the man went over and he couldn't talk. He's alive. How many of you know he's alive? He's alive. Well, you need to act like he's alive.
somebody on the strawberry chase for you. Are you listening to me? To let you know how good he is, how real he is to your life. And I said that about the toilet paper. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to buy one roll. I had one roll in my house when the trouble started. Well, roll with God and you get a lot of rolls. I'm serious. 
I'm still using the toilet paper that was brought to my house. God's got angels assigned to help you all day long. If it doesn't come, then you don't need it. If you ask the Lord for something and he doesn't give it to you, he'll either give you a dream or give you the answer or don't bother him anymore. He's not going that way. He's going another direction. He said, your ways are not mine. He's talking to me too. He wants you to have another look at how he operates. God's economy, heaven's economy is different from yours. And God's going to have it at your doorstep. A man came to me wanting to do some work. He, I said, how much will you charge me? He said, $50. Listen, I want you to move into the miracles. It's not going to be your money, your account, or your credit cards. It's going to be the credit that you set up to him. Yes. You know what we've been doing with a lot of that food? I hope the people that gave it to me don't hear all this. People next door have nine people living in their home. Five, seven children. I just go to see them. Now they're having Bible study by themselves. She doesn't know whether she's a Jehovah Witness, a Catholic. What was that other religion I told you she had? strange. The three of them that went together. But she's not sure, she told me. She said, we should be helping you. You're two widows over there. <laughs> Honey, this is the widow's mic that's going out now. Hallelujah. Jesus is going to look to see who's putting it in the pot. Hallelujah. And I dare you to believe, to believe God has sent angels to put gas in your car, oil in your car, yes. change your oil. We're living in the days of the heavens. He's going to pour it down upon you. Yeah. Unusual happenings. Amen. If you're mindful of the Lord, are you listening to what I'm saying? As you're mindful, be mindful of what the Lord wants in the morning when you wake up. You know, I used to do it all for years. I'd get up, oh, I don't want to get up. And I thought, oh, he's not hearing what he wants to hear from me. Lord, good morning. This is your day that you've made for me. And I'm looking for the unusual to happen. Let the neighbors think what they want. Go out in the yard just like our sister did. Make them think you're doing exercise to heaven. <laughs> you're exercising your faith. Are you hearing me? We need to get a little more liberal in how we act and feel about God. Amen. Yeah. I remember I came home from Russia one year, and I was at another church, and the pastor said, anybody else want to give a testimony? You could intimidate a lot of people. I'm telling you, you want to get somebody mad? You start telling about all the miracles God's doing. And you had nothing to do with it. They get upset. That's right. That's right. And I said, I'd like to testify. I'll never forget what he said in front of everybody. One of my first trips. Well, I knew you wanted to say something. <laughs> okay. I was the only one that heard it. He made sure nobody else heard it. Every time I'd go to his church, he looked like he wanted to kill me. I'm just being honest with you. You're not going to be happy until somebody wants to kill you. I'm trying to tell you that your joy is of the Lord. What you've experienced in Him every day. How He's mindful of what you're looking for. You're trying to find something. And all of a sudden, there it is. And you start weeping because He's leading you right to it. He knows what you want before you ask. Before you open your eyes. And you'll say, Lord, where is that? And all of a sudden, there it is. And he wants you to be thankful. How many want to be more thankful? Hallelujah. We used to wear, sing that song, I got just what I wanted from the Lord. And we thought we were going to wear it out, but you can't. <laughs> Come on, you can't do it. Now, I'm talking to some of you. And it's wonderful to hear these prophets and these people that are on the scene right now. Not everybody, has, how many of you noticed that nobody has the whole part? you got a part, somebody else has got a part. It's a body ministry. And you try to work without these three fingers or work without these two fingers. It won't work properly. Amen? We're limited. We're crippled. We need each other. But I'm telling you, God wants to do more. And I've told you this so many times. You need to think on it more. Think on it more. Think about it more. Think about it. Listen, are you listening to me? Think about it more. I can sit here and talk for hours of things that... The Krispy Kreme donut. Lord, it would be nice to have a Krispy Kreme if I'm going to stay in Arizona. Now, that's not important to God. So they put one up on 83rd Avenue right down the street from my house. And he left it there for six months, and then he removed it. 
Because I had enough. You think I'm kidding you? I used to go to Wendy's every Sunday morning before I went to church. And God wasn't pleased with that. Stopping on the way. And listen, it's a real emergency. Listen to me. You made 24 hours for you and me to have eight to sleep, to work, and to go serve him. You know what they did? They shut the Wendy's down right on the way. I've watched it happen 10 times in my life. And I knew if he didn't do it for anybody else, he didn't want me to get in the habit of depending on Wendy's at the corner. God wants you to depend upon him and see what he'll do. See what great thing he's going to do. How about the honey? Put your hands up, honey lady. <laughs> my brother put his hands up. I said, Lord, you know I like honey. How far do you drive here? Now, don't you go ask her for my honey. You get your own honey. <laughs> she brings me a jar of honey. Homemade honey. Mm. Isn't that good? Mm. So I went to the doctor. She said, you're eating honey? I said, yes, I am. She said, it's sweeter than sugar. That's right. <laughs> and honey gave it to me. Hallelujah. The doctor's looking at me. I said, you know the one I'm talking about. He said, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. <laughs> Come on, I'm telling you, make this thing go with you wherever you go. Just don't leave it at home. Yeah. You get in your car and you go in the grocery store. You're waiting to zap somebody with it. Hallelujah. I'm standing beside a lady yesterday and I heard the Lord say suicide. Well, she got away from me. Where was I yesterday? Somewhere. She got away from me. And I ran into her again. I said, oh, we run into each other again. And I remember the Lord said suicide. It was all over her face. I had a prayer meeting right there. I don't remember what store it was at. Hallelujah. I go into the bank. Where have you been? We missed you. We missed you. We love you. They couldn't tell me. They told me over and over how much they love me in the bank. You know why? Because God's on their back. Yes. Yes, he is. I'm trying to tell you this wonderful love affair with the Lord is more wonderful than we've been writing about. And I know you all love all these great people that are given a word. But I want to tell you something. If you follow up with Jesus, he'll tell you everything you need to know and when you need to know it. How many want to hear about my dream about Donald Trump? Can I have some water? Play me some water music. He's got a new song. 
I said, well, we got a song too. Should we be singing with him? I said, I got a song. We could sing with him. But he kept running. But everybody else was, you know, people get a little bit older and they sort of relax. There's no time to relax. It's time to make tracks. Amen. You know what they told me when I had a little problem with my feet? She said, well, if you can't run, just stand in the floor and do this. Like you're running. Come on, you're doing something. You're moving something. I said, okay, my feet got better. You can do something to work with God. And anyway, I said, come on, don't we want to run with him? And it was quite, it was like a number where you could, not thousands, but it could have been three or four hundred older people. But they were watching the man run, and he's singing his new song. We need to be singing a new song. Sing about what God can do, what he must do, what he will do, what he's purposed to do. Hallelujah. Then the scene changes. I thought you were the man who was, I asked Chris, what was the man running for? But he was about their age too, also. And he's got on his running shorts, jogging shorts and tennis shoes, and he's running around and around. Well, sometimes it just takes one person to run around the church to get the clock working. Well, we need to get into the timing of heaven. And our life is exciting and it's wonderful. And let people ask you, why are you so happy? You'll have them there next week. By tuning them to the ways of the Lord. Then the scene changed. And there's another field. And it's got ice and water all over, but there's a road running down the middle of it. I'll get to the interpretation. You think about it. There's a road running down the highway, down the middle of the field. It's grass on it. There's green stuff on both sides, but it's been iced over. It is thawing out. I could tell it was thawing out. And this man comes by with a white car. You know, white house, white car. Trouble. And he's got this white, it looks like a white Lexus or a BMW or something. A nice car. He said, I got to go down that road. Do you want to go with me? But I had seen it before I saw the first scene. It kept weaving it out of my spirit. And I thought, oh, it's frozen over. But it was thawing out. And you know what I'm saying? It was a little highway right in the middle. And it was thick with ice, just beginning to melt. But on both sides, it was really melted. And it was deep. You could have a bad accident if you got off the road. And Trump said to me, you want to ride with me? I said, I don't know if I do or not. <laughs> he said, oh, you won't have any problems. He said. He said, uh, I do this all the time. <laughs> In other words, he rode on slippery places, <laughs> icy places, yeah. scary places. Yeah. I said, uh, you know, I'm thinking, are you a good driver? Well, if he's the president, he better be. And I said, well, I don't know. I said, if, if we slip off of this road, I said, there won't be anything left of us. I said, okay, I'll get in the car with you. Well, I'd already seen this earlier in the dream. It was like in the beginning of the night, I kept seeing these icy roads, thick with ice. So I get in the car with him, and we were only on the road just a little while, and the car fell through the road. Now, hold on, it was good. The car fell through the road, and it starts to go down, but all of a sudden, I felt my feet touch dirt. But it was ice all around. In other words, my, it was a strange dream, you know, my walk. Your walk with God. Yeah. And my feet hit the ground underneath me. And it only came up to my chest. And it was up to the man's, not quite to his waist. He said, see, I told you we weren't going to go under. And I woke up. <laughs> but the fact he said, I do this all the time. Yeah. All the time. And some of us are scared to get into those slippery places. And, well, I don't know what's going on over there. Well, it, is it of God? I want to tell you, I want to go somewhere and get a drink. It's going to do something for me. Yeah. I want to sit down to a meal. It's going to strengthen me. Yeah. I don't want to keep getting information. I want to move with God. Amen. If information is supposed to bring transformation, not just another revelation, yes. but a transformation. Now, I'm not saying I'm safe and I'm going to be okay. It's not what I'm saying. I don't even know if it's saying that Trump is going to win the election. I got my view on some things, and... I can tell you this, in world events, the Lord spoke to my mother three days before Pearl Harbor was bombed and told her, 
But I don't know if my mother understood what to do with the word, as I don't remember. But I remember I was a little girl at three. She said the Lord spoke to her and said Pearl Harbor was going to be bombed. Also, when President Kennedy came into office, she had a dream about that in 1950 of his inauguration because they didn't vote in other than Protestants into the White House, and he was Catholic. Uh, there was a man, he was Catholic in the White House, and he was shot in the head. I remember her telling me the dream. There were four of us at home then. Mother had nine children. There was four in the beginning of her dream, but was only one in the dream when he won the election. And that's how it happened. The other three had left home. And she saw him going down Pennsylvania Avenue on the caisson being buried. And then she even had the address of the White House. Was it 1600? Something like that. I don't know what mother did with the dream because I was very young, but it's been four, at least four headline news features in my life that I've dreamed about. In Tibby, I mean, nobody in Tibby. I had a dream about that before it happened. How many people would die? How many pieces of equipment would be lost? Um, how many men would be killed? And if we had followed through on that, we would have been involved in Russia, according to my dream. This was back in the late 70s, early 80s, somewhere around there. I wrote it down, that was another dream. Then this uh, this killer in Georgia that killed about 30, 28 little children under the age of 12, they were all black. And I got a burden for the mothers of all those lost children. I remember reading the news one day. And I was in a room and 27 had been killed at that time, but I was in a room that had 28 on the door. And somebody knocked on my door, and when I opened the door, a gun went off, and I heard the words homicide. And I knew from the dream one more person would die before they'd catch it. And it was, it was 28 people. But actually, I lived in room 28. But I was in room 27. Isn't that amazing? But they caught it. Circumstantial evidence. But I felt a burden I could listen. If I'd had a burden in the beginning, all those children would have been killed. And when 9-11 came four or five days before it happened, I'm thanking the Lord for his hand being on me. I'm just telling you prophetic dreams. And all of a sudden, out of me, was, it wasn't me anymore. It was like you were watching the stock market, you know, going like a ticker tape, going around the building. And I was quoting Ezekiel 1, the whole first chapter. I was on the... By the river Kabar, and the hand of the Lord was upon me, and it was no longer me out of my mouth. It was like somebody else started to be thankful for God's protection, his covering, his help. It, it was, I was weeping and thanking God how wonderful it was to have his hand upon me. And I heard his voice say, I could remove my hand. And that's when I saw three stars fall off the American flag. That was New York. Pennsylvania and Virginia. Those were the three states that were attacked during 9-11. I went to church on Sunday night. This is Thursday at 2 o'clock. Thursday, on Sunday night, the pastor had gone to South America and left the church to me. And that night, all we had was smoke and visions and the prophetic words of the whole service. And the girls stood to prophesy that had never prophesied. Listen, God is telling us about things that are about to happen where the watchmen are going to be responsible what we do with it. I don't know what's going to happen to me. Because he said, I can remove my hand, and I saw those three stars fall off that flag, and I ran out. I'm getting back to Sunday and Tuesday when it happened. I went out, and I thought, well, perhaps there's a flag with three stars on it somewhere. I did, it was like the Spirit led me to the flag store. You understand? I didn't even know where it was. I got in my car, and it was like a voice was saying, go here, go here, go here. And I found a flag store with one flag in the whole store with three stars on it. And I hung it in my front yard. We went to church Sunday night, the pastor, and when this happened, no one could come back into the country. They couldn't fly. But Sunday night, this girl stood that had never prophesied. And people started seeing spoken, they thought it was the glory, but it wasn't. And she began to prophesy. And the Lord said, this country is about to be attacked in a terrible way. And we, I don't remember, we usually keep the tapes. This is, I don't think they had CDs then. If they did, there were a few, they were rare. This was 2001. 
And I remembered, I said, what did you see? What did you see? She said, it was just smoke everywhere. But the Lord said, if you will pray, I will spare the country. Well, we prayed a little while. You understand what I'm saying? A little while. And I said, we should have prayed all night. The pastor wasn't there. In other words, it wouldn't make any difference. Because I know they have time and a lot of things for a purpose. We prayed and prayed, but we never got another prophetic word that God was pleased with our prayer. God will usually tell you something if you've pleased him. He'll let you know. The release, you'll feel the release. You gotta keep working on it until you feel like the work is done. You can turn things around, you can have a dream of bad things. I've been in places where they were so full of devils that the Lord would told me one day, when the man of this house leaves, you get a bottle of oil and anoint this house. And when he comes home and goes to bed, you go back outside and do it again. Because he's carrying all those devils back and forth. And he was horribly ugly. And I had to do that to have peace. How would you like for the devil to come and visit you every night for six weeks? And you don't know what to do. And you're not sleeping. And you're a new babe in Christ. Till I sit up in the bed one night and I said, get out of my room. Don't cross this bloodline anymore. And he tapped up to the door every night. Then I had to get him out of the dining room and out of the kitchen door. And out of the back, you understand? Because he's trying to stop you from moving for God all the time. I can't do it. i got to go over here. Well, this is happening. This is taking place. Well, I don't have time right now. That's the appointed time of God when he puts that pressure on us. And he wants to put more on us that we will see changes. And one of the things that the Lord is saying, last Monday, I think I told you all, last Friday, Last Monday, Dee goes to her church. Pick up on these feelings. You don't know what it is, but tap into the unusual, the unknown. And Dee comes home, and I said, how's the prayer meeting? What happened? Tell me what happened. How was it? Any word from the Lord? And she's explained to me that there's a lady who gave a word, but she doesn't speak good English. And, and they, you got to wait. Don't put that person down. Don't tell them to come back. You wait. That's the word of the Lord. He's the one he sent to you. He's the handmaiden. He's the donkey. Come on. He's Peter. God is sending a word. And I said, tell me again, what did she say? She said, well, I don't know. She Her words were not plain. I said, we, we got to find that woman. And she called. She and her husband, can we come over? Yes, you can come over. I mean, they were there in a hurry. When I were there, they fixed all these things in my house. You didn't have to come. Two tops. Everything's working. My furnace, it sounded like a freight train. All he did was adjust the pipe. That was thrown in for good measure. Yeah, it's running quietly. He came again yesterday to see how it was running. But anyway, they came and they stayed nine hours in my house. 12.30, they went home that night. Wow. Talking about the things of God. And I had her to break it down slowly. What did the Lord say? She had the vision of another woman behind her that spoke perfect English. Had the same vision, so she goes and tells what she saw. But the implication did not hit the crowd the way it should have. I listened for the, all through the word there, it's and ifs and ands and buts to connect these things. If you'll do this or when you do this, the Lord said, I'm going to do this. The Lord told her that many of the church are living in a state of apostasy. Because they're not applying the word the way they should. And one of them, if you correct me if I'm not telling it right, you know how long they were there. They were there until we sent out for dinner. And we're still talking after four hours after the dishes are put away. And this woman had a depth in the Lord that I haven't heard from any preacher in a long time. She's Romanian. The Lord told her, I mean, the revelation was just pouring out of her. I said, I don't hear people. I used to hear these things a long time ago when I was younger. She's got a light on her face that it was white as your shirt that you never wore. 